Hi Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your March 2022 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Sagittarius. How will Sagittarius be affected by the March 2022 full moon? Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. We have the Six of Cups. And we have the page of pentacles. So that's interesting. It's a nostalgic time for us. And it's bringing us into a place of learning and of understanding and of, of a gathering of information. It can also be connecting us to where we once were when we were excited about things. So I'm not saying that we're not excited about things now. But it can be that we just feel overwhelmed or like we're trudging through mud. I just see feet walking through deep mud. And it's like, okay, how do I move forward? How do I get to, to where it is that I want to be? And we're finding that we're reconnecting with inspiration. We're reconnecting with insight. We're reconnecting with ideas. The Page of Pentacles is also Earth Sign Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, really coming forward during this time. If we're born on the cusp with Capricorn, there's a sense of that part of our personality really tapping us on the shoulder and saying, hey, let's dive deeper. Let's dive deeper. So just connecting with that or just that energy and Spirit's saying it's going to be more felt for those of us born on the cusp of Capricorn, but we're going to be diving deeper, each and every one of us. It's like, I'm going into this fully, absolutely, and, you know, without a hesitant of, of a doubt. So I don't know exactly what we're going into. So let's, let's see here. Let's keep on looking. Now, this is the energy that we need to be mindful of. Angels and Spirit Guides, show me clearly. This is the Ace of Pentacles. Okay, so that does make make things a bit more clear. So when we're diving after things, when we're going after things, it can be very easy for us to become just completely focused on the monetary amount of monetary amount. And Spirit's saying here, you know, there's going to be an adjustment period. And we might not find that the monetary amount is exactly what we thought it would be, or chasing the money isn't getting us where we thought we would be. There has to be that spark. There has to be that beauty that comes back. So here, just being mindful of that energy, because we're really going to be tempted. It's like, oh, wow, if I do it like this, or if I do it like that, or we're comparing ourselves. Yeah, we're also comparing ourselves to other people. And we're saying, well, how is it that if they do this, it works out for them. But if I do it, it's not working for me. We have to find our own groove and our own pattern. That's going to be very important. It moves us to our chakra energy angels and spirit guides and we have two here we have mother earth and we have truth so we have the earth star chakra located six inches below our feet and we have the throat chakra there is a sense that as we ground ourselves as we find our center our truth starts coming forward and it starts to balance us we're looking at things not in a sense of okay what is everybody else doing we're looking at things now and it's like okay, what do I need to do for me? How do I need to move me forward? And that becomes a very freeing energy that we are embracing. Now let's go deeper. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. We have the 10 of wands, the three of pentacles, the four of of swords 
and the Knight of Cups. So there's a real sense of us moving forward in our emotions, but there's also a sense that we've been through an emotionally draining battle. And we're going to find that inspiration is coming to us in very small ways, in very quiet ways. So during this moon, there's a sense of really listen, listen, listen. And we're going to be surprised that by listening, we are inspired, we start to move forward, we start to really see ourselves again. There's a need during this time to pay attention to our dreams. We have been overburdening ourselves and demanding a lot from ourselves. So during this time to rest and to relax is going to be very important to us. There's also a sense here of what I expected isn't what is. And so as we're stepping back, we're going to find that a lot of the messages that we get, a lot of the inspiration that we get and really need, it, they come from our dreams and it really inspires us. It really helps us to move towards what we want. Then we have, no, we're going to the Ten of, of Wands. The Ten of Wands here is being overburdened and we're really releasing it. There is a sense of release it and you will be okay, but there's also a sense of I can't pick up the past anymore. And that's where the energy of the Six of Cups comes into, into play. It's like the past, something from the past is holding us back. We've been carrying around, it's like a diary, a notebook, something that keeps us linked. And I see it as like maybe we journal a lot and we're keeping ourselves trapped. And what spirit is saying is like, burn it and let it go. Burn it and let it go. See who we become. Because the past is coming up a lot during this time. And the Three of Pentacles, I really see this as the evolution of who we are. But the Three of Pentacles is also working together, coming together. We have to be mindful when we're working with other people. And it's even like when you're cleaning up with your kids or when, you know, you guys are all like deciding who does dishes, who cooks, everything like that. Don't take on all of the burdens. During this time, Sagittarius, we're going to think, oh, I can do that. Oh, I can do that. And then we we'll find at the very end when we're super tired, a level of resentment comes forward. And we just have to be mindful of it because it's going to bring us to a place where they always do this and this always happens. So just being aware of it before and saying, oh yeah, I could really use extra help or, oh, thank you. You know, why don't you watch the kids or you can walk the dog or, you know, whatever it is that's going on at work, it can be, yeah, you know, you handle that project or we'll work on this together type of thing will be better than, okay, I can shoulder it all myself. So being aware of that is going to be very helpful for us. It moves us then to go deeper. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. We have the Ace of Cups, the Five of Swords, the Queen of Wands, and the Four of Pentacles. So we're coming through as the Queen of Wands. There's fire, there's passion, there's beauty, there's a real sense of courage and determination leading us. And there's a real sense of us stepping into our power and what we want and what we're looking for. But there's also a sense here of we've been through a lot of battles and that has actually messed with our energy flow. It's messed with the way that we're connecting. We can just feel drained, overwhelmed, lackluster, not as excited about the world as we once were. And there's a sense here of my energy is blocked. My energy isn't helping me to move forward the way that I need to, the way that I want to. And what we're going to see is that there's a healing that comes over us. There's a sense of if we can embrace emotional vulnerability, which is going to be something that's going to be a little bit hard for us, we're going to find that this really puts us in the right in the right headspace. This also links us with the energy that this moon is really bringing forward because the moon is trying, <coughs> excuse me, the moon is trying Pluto, and this brings our emotions to the forefront. Now, it doesn't mean that we're emotionally, you know, like unstable or we have outbursts or we just feel like we want to run and hide. It means that we feel things quite powerfully. And as we feel things very powerfully, we feel our emotions, we feel other people's emotions, and that can be what makes it like, nope, I'm closing the door. So during this time, we're very in tuned. We're very aware. And that can be something that's overwhelming for us, but it's also going to be one of our greatest powers during this time if we don't let it weigh us down. Now, the moon, okay, is in Virgo, and it says you are good enough. And so there's a real sense here of I am embracing my beauty. I am embracing who I am. I am enough, and I am bringing me to the table. Now, as this comes forward, the I am enough 
energy, we're connecting very strongly with Neptune. Neptune is all about spiritual, it's all about what we deeply want and long for. I, I see it as being very connected with the moon's energy because the moon energy is all about the subconscious. It's all about where we feel comfortable, you know, feeling secure, feeling grounded within our world. And so that Neptune energy is saying, okay, what is it that I dream of? What is it that I want? The sun is right next to Neptune. So that amplifies everything. And we're going to be finding here that we need to step into a spiritual healing. We need to step into what we desire and really let that move forward or else the battles that we have been going through, they're just going to keep us blocked, keep us blocked. And it's going to be like, okay, I have one battle after another and the fighting just doesn't stop. And this is going to be, you know, this can be equated onto a world scale. This can be equated, you know, just for us individually. I need to embrace love. I need to embrace my connection. I need to, to stand up in, in the sense of a spiritual understanding. And then that brings us to the place of a new dawn. That brings us to a place of a new day and a new instinct and a new idea. And it's like, oh, well, I didn't see that coming. You know, I didn't think that that could be it. And as the emotions clear, and as we become stabilized within ourselves, there there is this sense here of almost a mistrust. Like, can I, can I walk forward this way? Can I have this? So let's go deeper. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. We have the sun, so it's a definite yes. We have the page of wands, us as a student. And then we have the page of pentacles coming through again. And this time we're reevaluating. There's a real sense here with the page of pentacles re repeating itself. You know, what is the student energy? What is the energy of learning around prosperity, success, finances? Are we learning it from a very grounded young soul? So it could be a child. It could be somebody who's just very youthful or young or, you know, kind of like outside of the box of thinking, but very grounded, very stabilized, very, very wise. You know, that's just the energy that's coming forward. So as we're connecting with this and as we're looking at new ideas, because again, we have to be mindful of we're going to think, oh my gosh, this is a gift or, oh my gosh, I have to do it this way. I have to start changing it so I could be more of the quote unquote mainstream. And then we're just going to find, well, that's not me. And we're going to find that we feel suffocated. We feel, you know, let down. We feel like, oh my gosh, how do I move forward? And that's where we're really becoming a student of how it is that we want to be within our lives, how it is that we want to open the door. There is a real sense of, of learning and discovery and insight and ideas coming forward here. Now, what I'm seeing is this sense of it's like peeking through the door and stepping back. So as we're stepping forward, we can be overwhelmed and it can be like, okay, can I do this? You know, is this right for me? The questions come forward. And because we do have the queen of wands here, but it's in, in the midst of all the battle, it's the question is when everything is calmer, when everything is centered in the quiet of the night, can I let myself be free? Can I let myself express myself? Can I open up that sense of where I want to be, who it is that I am. And it brings us to the sun. It brings us to this place of beauty and prosperity and, you know, the happiest card in the whole entire tarot. So the answer is absolutely yes, but we have to just let that light shine. And as that light shines, we let ourselves shine. We are, you know, just connected and, and radiant. Now let's see what the moon has to say for herself. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. So we have resistance, action, and will. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. The full moon, surrender to the divine. It's time for healing. bring love into the situation. So the question starts off and it's the gift of the Ace of Cups coming forward. You know, that's God's source spirit. However you see the divine, the universe handing us a gift. It can be through tears. It can be through doubts and fears. But the question is, will we bring love into the situation? And that's the main question here. As we're moving forward, as we're connecting, are we going to lose sight of what it is that we truly want? or And also of the gifts that are, are ours. Are we going to hide our light under, you know, a bushel? Are we going to say, no, I can't do this or no, I can't fully be me because of X, Y, Z, or are we going to let ourselves shine? And it brings us to action. 
it brings us to a time of taking action because this is a time of, of healing. And in, in that healing, we take action. We, you know, become, we see, we, we start to embrace and we start to feel the healing around us. And then the resilience, the resistance, not resilience, but the resistance, which I see this as like our resilience is the fact that we are now surrendering to the divine. We are opening up that door. We are connecting fully and beautifully and absolutely with that full moon. And it starts to have us looking at things so differently than we have looked at it before. Our subconscious Luna message is be bold and make the first move. Self-love. It's going to be through self-love that we are bold and we make the first move, that we, you know, break down those barriers, that we start to really see ourselves and connect with ourselves and learn what it is that we want. It brings us then to our subconscious energy to be mindful of. And this is the eight of wands. This is the fact that everything happens really quickly and it can sweep us away, sweep us away. So spirit wants us to be very mindful of how we're moving forward, what we're being swept towards, because it's going to be different than what we thought it was. And so that's going to be something that kind of plays with our head. It happens so quickly. And Spirit's like, no, 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 step back a little bit, step back a little bit. You're going to want to because we're so frustrated with all the frustrations, with all the battles that we've been through, with the sense of, you know, I've had to be so strong for so long that when we start to see a glimmer of hope or a glimmer of acceptance or understanding, it's like, oh, okay, I'll go there. But just be, be mindful that there can bring its own set of problems if we don't walk slowly, if we're not more cautious. It brings us then to our subconscious chakra energy, which is flexibility. And this is the sacral chakra. It is being more flexible with ourselves and our understanding, the language that we're using, the, the way that we move our body. It's, it's being more connected. And as we are more connected, we are more powerful. It brings us then to our subconscious tarot message which begins with the magician there's a magic to us there's a spark we can not claim it and let it fall away but if we claim it we not only feel the peace come over us we feel a grounding we feel a prosperity we feel an insight we feel new ideas opening up the door and it's like okay if i let myself shine what are the the possibilities and that's going to be the real question here if i let myself shine what are the possibilities that will bring me forward? It leads us then to the six of wands. And the six of wands is celebration. It is success. It is like, I have made it. And that energy around us saying, I have made it, brings us to healing. It brings us to love. It brings us to a deeper understanding of ourselves and what we want. And as we have that healing come forward, we then see... The four of swords we see and honor our story we see and honor everything that we've been through we start to give ourselves permission to rest and to breathe and that starts to give us permission to become so much more than we ever thought we could be quiet is going to be really important during this moon sitting under the moon just enjoying our time and connecting with the energy of the earth and ourselves that is going to be revolutionary all right all right, Sagittarius, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let us end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of this time and of ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Sagittarius, and may you have a blessed moon. <laughs>